Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well. And today we have the final uh, box office projections, the forecast for Shang-Chi as it comes out today. Came out last night with Thursday previews. We don't have the Thursday preview numbers as of the time I'm recording this video, but we do have the final domestic range and also final weekend range total that they are projecting and we'll see just how well or how not well this film is able to match up to those numbers. But before going any further, please make sure that you smash that like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel with that bell notification turned on. That way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, it's going to bring all of the Asian audiences out, right? That is what the mainstream media is trying to tell us, that this is going to be a massive hit, a massive success. It's going to break Labor Day weekend records. No one's ever going to ever expect a film to be this successful ever again, maybe. Potentially. We'll see. And it's going to be because of the fact that this features the first ever Asian American lead in a movie, even though the lead himself, I don't think, is even American, but is Canadian. But again, that is kind of, you know, uh, besides the point here, the point of all of this is to try and, you know, of course, play identity politics and try and turn this into an issue of race instead of saying, hey, the movie's good and that's why it'll be successful. Remember back in the day when that used to be the standard? Is the film good? Is the story good? Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember those days too. It seems like it's been a long time, but... The three-day weekend opening range is between $45 and $60 million, with the domestic range, that would be U.S.-Canada range, $120 to $170 million. Now, I personally am looking at these domestic total ranges and saying to myself, I, I don't quite think or see how this film could possibly be this successful. Not just in the current marketplace that we are in, but especially in comparison to other films coming from Disney that have come out. I just, it's really difficult for me to quite understand exactly how any of the films that they're talking about here, or rather the films that have come out so far this year, in comparison, doing not as well as Shang-Chi, somehow doing even better. It just, again, it just does not really make a whole lot of sense to me. Let me see if I can try and pull up some numbers for everybody here, because let's go ahead and just go into some of the most uh, recent big releases. Let's pull up Jungle Cruise. Let's pull up, I guess, Suicide Squad. That was also, again, a big budget film. And let's also pull up Black Widow. So for Black Widow, the film made $181 million domestically. So they are projecting that this film will make just under what this film made domestically. Black Widow, a franchise, or rather a character that many people have known and have been asking for a movie for for a long time. Shang-Chi, someone that most people have no idea who the heck he is. And yet, just barely under what they expect this film to make compared to Black Widow. The Suicide Squad. They expect this film to do three, you know, two, three times as well as The Suicide Squad, which, hey, don't get me wrong, this is not a good film, and so, therefore, it wouldn't surprise me all that much, but, again, this is a massive budget film with characters and a story that most people at least have somewhat knowledge of. Obviously, this one is affected by HBO Max to some extent, but still, I think that it is something that is worth mentioning here. Also, Jungle Cruise just barely cracked $100 million, world, or rather, $100 million domestically. And they think this film's going to make another $40, $50 million on top. And this film doesn't have any massive stars attached to it or a massive social media presence like Dwayne The Rock Johnson does. So again, you see why I'm a bit skeptical as far as this film doing as well as it is. Now, is it theoretically possible that this film does $45 to $60 million opening weekend and does somewhere between $120 and $170 million? Sure, it's, it's theoretically possible. Maybe they will be able to somehow convince Asian audiences to go out in droves to see this film, even though, personally, if I were to hear that from the media, I would say, yeah, that's that's kind of offensive that you would say, I would just want to see this film simply because of the race of the person on screen. Again, that's kind of a, a reductive reasoning there. It's kind of a, an offensive and downright racist explanation for a film's success. I just don't quite still understand. Again, back in the day when you used to just say, hey, yeah, the film's good. The film's good. Good story. Go and see it. I miss those days. I really do. But really, in all honesty, $45, $60 million seems a bit on the high end. Uh, again, obviously, it is the Labor Day weekend. And typically, what I've found in the last few years that I've been covering this stuff is that they always think this is the year. If you kind of go back, there's always that talk of, well, historically, Labor Day has always been fool's gold for studios. And yet they think this year they're going to be able to make a difference. It's like always the same narrative. They always kind of like over project. And then when it underperforms or it doesn't meet the high expectation, they say, well, it's Labor Day. And we knew that this was a possibility because Labor Day is notorious for doing this. 
So it's just kind of weird to me that they would still actually stick to these types of ranges and, and these types of projections, especially when they're making every excuse under the sun as to why this film might not actually reach this number. Again, it's always it's almost like they're saying, hey, you know what? This is what we think it could. This is the potential that this film has. But hey, there's also these other factors where if it doesn't do as well as we think it's going to do, hey, we have these excuses already ready for this film. Again, I think it's just kind of a, a little silly. Uh, to say the very least. However, this is expected to increase the box office totals about 35 to 55% from last weekend. Again, last weekend didn't really see anything major come out. Uh, but as we can see here, Shang-Chi is expected to make, again, the average of that is $52 million. So again, that's kind of the standard that we're going to be basing this off of. So we're going to be watching this throughout the weekend of what they think this film's going to make. But again, the, the, the industry... Uh, projections for the film is that it's going to make 52 million in its opening weekend coming out at around 4,300 theaters. This is a theatrically exclusive film. So, hey, I guess we'll we'll see if this film is able to do that. All the while, Candyman is expected to have a 58% drop from its first weekend. Uh, F uh, Free Guy is still making money. Again, Free Guy, kind of the surprise hit, even though it costs so much money, it's still not necessarily going to be, you know, profitable. At this point, Paw Patrol doing pretty well, especially having a lower budget that kind of has helped that film. Jungle Cruise still make a little bit of money, but the film costs so much, it really doesn't matter at this point because the film's already, again, a financial uh, flop and failure. And then you have the other films that are just, you know, barely scraping the bottom, as it were, and probably going to be out of theaters uh, very, very soon, especially films like The Suicide Squad, The Protégé, things like that, which, again, is not all that surprising. But what is surprising is... We got ourselves, actually, no, this isn't really surprising at all. This is kind of expected. We've got some more uh, dumb commentary from Scotty Boy Mendelson. As you will know, Scotty Boy Mendelson is the uh, box office reporter over at Forbes.com, and he always has some of the worst takes imaginable. But let's see what he has to say here. He says this, By this time tomorrow, we'll be dissecting the Thursday preview numbers for Disney and Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Fingers are crossed that Destin Daniels Cretan's MCU action fantasy cannot something approximately a solid opening weekend over under $100 million worldwide would be nice, and yet that would not be enough to make up for what is likely a close to $200 million budget, which, by the way, they are not reporting on at this point. As it launches over the Friday to Monday Labor Day frame, with solid reviews, strong buzz, presumably decent word of mouth, can't imagine General Lonnie says not somewhat enjoying it, <laughs> and a month before No Time to Die, on October 8th, the film has some room to breathe, even if it doesn't set the box office on fire this weekend. So again, kind of setting it up, setting up, saying, hey, yeah, this film, if it does well, boom, I told you. And then here's the excuse. And yet, even noting the obvious COVID curve and climate change related variables at play this only in theaters <laughs> release as a skewed shot at setting two contradictory box office records which would be scoring the largest labor day weekend launch of all time and being the lowest grossing opening for any mcu film of all time so in either case again they're gonna spin it as a success or they're going to have some stupid reason to explain it as a failure. What kind of just drives me nuts, though, is that Scotty Boy Mendelson is calling a hurricane. Hurricanes, by the way, have been around for hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands, if not millions of years. So to say it's a climate change related variable is ridiculous. It's like hurricanes have been around since long before we even were talking about this subject. So the fact that he's trying to use that now to say, well, you know, the only reason why uh, this hurricane exists and the only reason why there's any flooding anywhere is because it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is this is the logic, everybody. This is the logic that's being used by someone who's supposed to be a credible source on covering the box office. Again, he called a hurricane and the remnants of a hurricane climate change related variables. Ridiculous. Insanity. But as I mentioned before, there is no actual projected, uh, rather no reporting of what Shang-Chi's production budget is. The ballpark figure is that it's going to be around $200 million, at least north of $150 million. And they give some um, kind of other films examples here. Captain Marvel was around $152 to $175 million. Doctor Strange, $165 to $236 million. I would say this one probably is going to be closer to the Doctor Strange number only because there is just so many CGI set pieces in this film. And we all know that that is going to drive up the cost of any given movie. And the CGI doesn't even look all that great based on the trailers. So I, I just, again, I don't quite understand why studios are relying so much on heavy-handed CGI, green screen, blue screen, when it just looks so artificially bad that it's just not even worth it. 
at this point, right? Th those are things that are supposed to uh, boost your films, supposed to make your films look spectacular, look amazing, and it ends up just making it look like a bunch of digital fluff. But I still can't get over the fact, again, Scotty Boy Mendelson trying to blame climate change for why this movie might not do well. But as you can see, right, the, the excuses are already out. They're saying, hey, yes, this is, we expect it to do well, and if it did well, boom, we told you, boom, it's the Asians, right? They, they have everything set up there, but if it doesn't do well, oh man, it's COVID, oh man, it's because of uh, climate change causing the hurry. It's like, Again, they have everything written down in the book. And what what is the actual truth, though? Well, the truth is this is an unknown entity, right? Shang-Chi is not a well-known property. It is a Marvel film, this is true. But what we've seen is that even well-known properties like Black Widow still did not do nearly as well as any other Marvel film did because of the various conditions that we have in the box office and because there are, whether people want to admit it or not, a lot of people who have really tuned out the MCU, who have really said, I'm done, I'm kind of over it. After Endgame especially, people kind of got to the point of saying, why should I care? You then had all of the MCU shows that came out of Disney+, Plus, and it just made everything so much more convoluted and, and, and so uh, complicated that even people that maybe stuck around would say, man, this is just getting so convoluted, it's getting so crazy, I don't even know what to follow anymore. I don't even know why I would want to watch this nonsense anymore. So you have all of these different factors going on. And that's the reason why I think that many of these people are overplaying their hands. I would not be surprised at all if this number is either at the lower end of the estimate or misses the estimate altogether. Um, at the same time, though, I, I would not be surprised if it overperforms. This is, again, a Disney film. This is an MCU film. This is also a theatrical exclusive film. So Disney is going to do everything it can promotion-wise to try and get as many butts into seats as possible, right? There's going to be uh, as many... Uh, you know, promotions and as many giveaways as they possibly can to try and boost those numbers. Again, we've seen them do this in the past. Now, do I think that this is going to lead to the film being financially successful? No, right? Remember, that was the big narrative that was being pushed back with uh, Captain Marvel. Everyone's like, the only reason why I made a billion dollars was because Disney paid for it. It's like, no, like the, the evidence there was just not credible at all and it was just nonsensical. But an opening weekend, right, when they are clearly trying to get butts into seats, trying to boost word of mouth, there is absolutely precedent for studios in general doing those types of promos to try and get people to go see their movie. And so I would not be surprised if they do that opening weekend. But guess what? That means that logically that second week drop off is going to be more massive than it would have been prior because it's a more artificial number in the opening weekend. And that potentially then would just talk about and lead us to the discussion of the film being the financial flop that it likely is going to be. Because as I have mentioned previously in many videos, all of the big budget films from all the studios this year have essentially flopped and are almost guaranteed to flop for all the future films coming out. The biggest one probably is going to be James Bond, because even though that is a massive worldwide international property, it has one of the biggest budgets that I've ever seen. When we're starting to talk about a film costing with marketing over $400 million, again, we, we get to the point of them having to make so much money and in the marketplace where the highest number we've seen in the worldwide market has been over $600 million around 700 million, I think, was what Fast 9 eventually got out around. And even that number, if you break it down, isn't necessarily showing financial success because of a 25% cut from the China number. And again, also the massive budget, etc. You start to realize that it's going to be hard for any big budget film to make its money back in this marketplace. But we'll be following it. And of course, we'll see just how close it gets to this $52 million. And also what the narrative is, because obviously they have all of their narratives kind of set up at this point. But what are your thoughts about this? Have you gone to see Shang-Chi in the Thursday previews? I believe Gary at Nerdronic saw it and says that apparently the MCU has been confirmed, I think with some of the post credit scenes of which apparently there are two of them. And uh, we'll see exactly what happens. I'm still very much mixed about uh, watching it slash how I'm watching it. Um, but <laughs> I'll get back, I guess, with more information on that. There's some great fire stick videos out there is what I'll say probably about it. But anyway, what your thoughts let me know in the comments section below if you like this video smash that like button light up that fire button if you're watching on odyssey also make sure you subscribe to the channel and again you're all amazing beautiful people have a wonderful rest of your day and as always god bless and now for a huge shout out to all of my September Locals Patreon and Subscribe Star members. First with my Locals members, Cat's App, D Sharp, It's a Modern Major General Story, Laura Bifford de Havitt, and Robert Barnes. I want to give a shout out to especially to Laura, who is now a double supporter on Locals and on Patreon. So thank you for that. And to all of my Locals members. A shout out also to my Patreon members, Andrew Hoyle, animation commentator, Brandon, Brian. MP, Christopher Bowman, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damien Cook, Garrett Searles, 
Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Lore of the Modern Major General Story once again, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Ellen, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe, and a shout out also to my subscribe star members, the R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, slash the new number two, J. Ra, the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot. And if you want to have your name shouted out at the end of every single video or live stream on the main channel, please check out the links in the description below, specifically that top link, which will bring you to all of the links to my various social media pages and also places of support as well. And remember, Remember that if you join at the Army of Asgard level, you also get access to giveaways of 4K titles. Right now, I have a live giveaway of Snatch on 4K Steelbook. I've also got ones for Dread, uh, Wrath of Man Blu-ray. I've also got A Quiet Place Part 2 on 4K. I've got Top Gun on 4K, Sicario on 4K, tons of films and more to come, especially as more films are getting released for those giveaways. At the uh, Keeper of the Bifrost level, you get all that, plus you get access to an exclusive podcast, podcast that I do. With John the Flick Pick Flickinger. Not only do you get to listen to the podcast, you also get to ask questions that we answer as much as we can and as fully as we can in much more, I guess you could say, uncensored way, but again, a much more free-flowing way for our members over there at the Keeper of the Bifrost level above. And if you join the Chosen of Valhalla level, you get access to all of those things. Plus, in your first month, you get a free t-shirt, your choice, and I send it to you no matter where you are in the world. And also, you get to once a month be featured on the channel in the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we talk about movie, news, and pretty much anything that you want to talk about. So if that all sounds like fun to you, check out those links below. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.